go down there, Diane. Just go down there. You're like their number one favorite guy. Because you won them cash. Hi and welcome to the Tour Report from Secret Golf this week on the PGA Tour. Well, after all the drama of the US Open last week, we are off to Hartford in Connecticut for the Travelers' Championship. Elk, it's at TPC River Highlands. I read something earlier. We know that this is a short course, but it's actually the shortest course on the tour behind Pebble Beach. Yes, this course, Diane, it's, it's a tale of two courses. One part of the golf course sits up on top on a very flat land, sort of land that was used for, you know, farming. And the second half of it sits down below on the river. And there's some dramatic holes, one behind you right there, the 15th hole, very famous little short par four you can drive on in one. And Diane, the players will be having a breath of fresh air going to Hartford because they are going to be making lots of birdies. This course gives up a million of them. I mean, I love the US Open last week when, you know, minus six is the winning score and the plus the cut was at plus four. It's going to be a very different story this week. And we're talking about the fact that this is a short course. It is 6,841 yards. And actually the 15th hole you were just talking about there, it's a par four under 300 yards. And I read a stat that 90% of the field go for it in one. <laughs> Yeah, there's it's some of these players, Diane, hit a three wood, but you can you can hit a straight three wood, land it in that fairway, and run right to the front edge of that green. The only spot you can't go is left of the green into the water, but the green is raised up a little bit, so it's a very it's a great hole. The, the big crowds sit around. This is one of the most attended tournaments on the whole PGA Tour. People up in Cromwell, they love their golf, and they just come out in droves. And I was saying there that the strength of field this week is really high. And, uh, you know, it can be kind of weird after a major what's going to happen the week after. And especially for fans as well, you've had all that excitement. And then it's like back to a regular PGA Tour event. But this one has so much appeal. This week, Dustin Johnson's in the field. He's defending champion. Brooks Kepka, Bryson DeChambeau, Tony Finau, Matt Wolf. I mean, quality names. And you were saying that it's one of those tournaments that they do so much for the players that the players want to be there this tournament has such a good reputation with the players diane they i don't know what they do they have a group of people that they never forget a birthday they your brother's birthday is today russell knox how old is he by the way he is 36 36 today i bet you they have a cake for him in his locker <laughs> um of course, these players are, are well taken care of everywhere, but this tournament goes a, a step beyond. My children, when they were little, thought that Hartford was the number one course on the whole PGA Tour because when we checked in, they had a little goodie bag full of little, little toys and crafts, each with their names on them. They don't forget anything, and they are, these players are taken care of uh, so well this week. And, and, and that, Diane, brings these guys back to play. They... They like that and they come back. And there's one name that always springs to mind when you think about this tournament, and that's Bubba Watson. He's won it three times before. There's um, He's like an ambassador for the club. There's a huge charity element to this tournament and he's like the main man. But we're going to we're gonna dive into, obviously, course analysis and looking at names, but there's courses that guys are always going to play. And we've said it before, horses for courses. This is definitely one of those tracks for the likes of Bubba Watson. Yeah, and it, this is a sort of a, you know, a unique set of past champions. Your brother, uh, who's a medium range hitter, is one here. Jordan Spieth, medium range. But then you have these bombers like Dustin Johnson, the defending champion. Bubba Watson curves the ball a ton. But basically, this is a sprint. This tournament, Diane, you're looking at four or five under per day, 18, 19, 20 under wins this tournament. And how do you do that? <laughs> got to hit fairways. I think you got to hit fairways. Get on these greens. Get as many looks as possible. Hit a lot of greens in reg. We're looking at greens in reg. We're looking at guys that make a lot of birdies. We're looking at guys who can get the ball up and down when they do miss. So that's what we're looking at. But it doesn't really have to suit a long hitter. Okay. And uh, we talk about it being a bit of a birdie fest. This is where Jim Furyk shot that 58. 
in 2016. So we know the scores are going to be low and uh, well, we're looking forward to that this week. So who is going to make the birdies? We're going to dive into it on our tour report. We're going to give you our re-ranked top 10, then some sizzlers, and we'll talk about some other notable names in the field that were maybe not jumping up so high this week. And those all important dark horse picks this week for the travelers. Compete against your friends on PGA Tour events. Win cash and bragging rights. Test your golf knowledge. Experience the success and failure of PGA oh, Tour players. Man. SG Tour App is an engaging golf experience designed by professional golfers that created a variety of games, including single and multi-day games, as well as tournament long contests. It's really simple. Join or create a game, pick four players, and win cash. You can even immerse yourself in interactive features, including course strategy, putt predictor, and daily content exclusively from PGA Tour players. The word is out, and golf fans are catching on. So don't miss out. Download the SG Tour app now. It's off to Hartford, well, Cromwell, Connecticut, this week for the Travellers Championship on the PGA Tour. I'm Diane Knox and Steve Elkington is here as well. We are giving you our tour report. So we're going to get into our re-ranked top 10 in just a little while. But Elk, you know, with TBC River Highlands being one of the shortest courses that the guys play, it really is all about hitting greens, getting it close and making those birdie putts as <laughs> obvious as that sounds. Yes, when the players get to this course, Diane, it will be a breath of fresh air coming off Torrey Pines because there's, there's a bunch of birdies to be made on this course. But when I was there and played this tournament, you know that four or five under is going to be out there every day for you if you can hit the ball on these greens and make a few putts. There's guys that have won this tournament, like your brother, Russell Knox, Jordan Spieth, experts at hitting greens. But then you have a sort of another bunch of players, dying that are very long. Dustin Johnson just demolishes the par fives. Bubba Watson, same thing. But at the end of this golf course, right behind you there, the 15, 16, 17, wrap right around that horseshoe of that lake there, there's a couple of cru crucial shots that you have to pay the toll to win this tournament. The key one is on the 17th tee shot. Very dangerous shot. But at the end of the day, Diane, you are going to have to get yourself somehow four birdies every day if you want to stay in the pace this week. Okay. Right. So the main stats we're going to be looking at this week to do our re-ranking, total driving, proximity to the hole, scrambling, putting average and birdie average. And then we take in a, a lot of intangibles into consideration as well. Coming off the US Open, guys that played well last week, we're going to be moving them up. And our guy at the top, that's exactly the category that he's in. Scotty Scheffler is our number one this week. Now, he finished seventh at the US Open. In his last finish before that, he finished third. We know that this guy has got great momentum. He hasn't won on the PGA Tour. And Elk, when someone like Scheffler really contains and contains in majors, it's got to really, I mean, they have to be so motivated to go out there and just get that win. Everyone's going to listen to us and say, well, how could you pick Scotty Scheffler as the number one guy? Does anyone believe that Scotty Scheffler will not win on the PGA Tour? Of course not. He's going to win. And when will it be? Yeah. It's going to be this week, Diane, I think, because he's in form. And you've got the stats in front of you. He's one of the top 10 in putting, top 10 in driving, top 10 in birdie average. So is this the week? Yeah. We I mean, total driving number one on the whole PGA Tour. Birdie average fourth, putting average, he's 11th. He's, um, a, he's not a quiet contender by any means because he's in contention pretty much every week right now. But he's one of those guys that is often overlooked, I think because he is, this is what, his second season on the PGA Tour, and because he hasn't got that status of a win around him yet. So at 22 to 1, the odds for Scheffler are pretty good this week. Scheffler just had a great US Open, was in a lot of pressure. He has this sort of skill set 
he's also all of his friends that he hangs around with are all big winners on the tour. Jordan Speed, all these guys that he hangs around with, went to school with. When is it going to be his turn to step forward? Well, we know he's in form. We know he has the skill set to play well on this course. So I'm very bullish on Scotty Scheffler. I think it's time for him to go ahead and do a John Rahm, Diane. Step up to the plate and make it happen. Right, well, for all of those reasons, we have Scotty Scheffler as our number one guy this week. I'm, I'm just going to add right now that we had John Ram as our number one guy for the US Open, and he won. So maybe Scheffler will thank us. Maybe we're starting a little bit of a role here. Um, the guy coming in at number two, we mentioned him in our recap for the US Open because he was sitting in that clubhouse nice and early on three under par. He finished solo third. Harris English, we, uh, we talk about the fact that he won the Century Tournament of Champions at the start of the year. And then he took a little bit of a dip in form, but he played great at the Palmetto Championship, fell away a bit on Sunday, but it was in the final group after 54 holes. So Elk, Harris English as our number two pick this week. Yes, and I like guys that have come off a of US Open. Harris English finished third. He didn't feel all the pressure. He won't be that fatigued. But his game is perfect. I mean, he hits it straight. He putts good. He's come out of a lull, as you noted there. And where will Scott? Where will Harris English be at the end of this FedEx Cup? He's up there pretty good already. And there's two ways to think about this week, Diane. There's only about four or five weeks left until we get to the FedEx Cup. There's one major left, the Open Championship. There's a lot of jockeying going on for guys that are trying to keep their tour card. But there's also a lot of jockeying for guys like Harris English that are going to try to get into the top 10. So they're very motivated. So I'm going a lot with form this week because let's face it, when you go to a golf course and you're already putting well and you're already hitting it straight, that's a huge advantage. And looking at English's stats from last week around Tory Pines, he was so high up in putting, so high up in greens and regulation. That was really the strength of his game last week. And look where it got him, a solo third finish. So if he can do it on a course like Tory Pines, taking that to TBC River Highlands, where that's going to be such a fundamental part of the, the game for success here. Um, he's 10th in birdie average on the PGA Tour right now and 9th in total driving. So there's a lot of consistency now from Harris English. And as you say, after that lull, he's really found something to come out of that. Yes. And uh, as we talked about Scotty Scheffler, who's a very similar style player as English. Mm -hmm. Scheffler, we put Scheffler just above English because I think if they both go head to head today, I think Scheffler has that determination. He's never won. So that's that's the way we're thinking if, if, that's, if, if you want to know how we do it. Okay, well, we're going to have a good conversation about the guy at number three as well. Again, a good US Open and he had the chance to win it. He uh, fell away very slightly with some, some errors towards the end of Sunday and ended up at two under par total. But we have Brooks Kepka at number three this week. Right, Elk, here was, this was my question mark in the... We know he played great at the PGA Championship and then he played the Palmetto at Congaree the week before the US Open and he missed the cut and he said himself that he found it so hard to get the energy to play in regular PGA Tour events compared to majors. You know, a fourth place finish at the US Open. What's going to motivate him to go out and play well this week? Well, Kepka, you know, he hit it left at 16 yesterday, didn't get up and down, uh, almost made birdie at 17. Then he didn't quite drive it in the fairway at 18, finish up making bogey, but he was only one shot away from being in that five under slot yesterday. But what's going to make Kepka motivated for this week? His brother's playing Diane, so he'll be practicing with his brother. He'll be showing him around. Also, I always think of motivated players and why, why is Kepka here? Why is, what's he trying to do? Well, I looked down the FedEx Cup list. He's in the top 15. A win here puts him into the top two slots of the FedEx Cup. You know Kepka's trying to hide that 20 million for the end of the year. That's, that'd be the icing on the cake for him. But I'm not sure why Kepka can't get up for these regular events, Diane. The money is still, the, it still spends the same way. Uh, but yes, I think he'll be motivated with his baby brother there this week and we're working on his game. Kepka's playing great, putting good, 
driving it straight. He was right there. He could have won that tournament yesterday. Yeah, he could have. He did play well. The other thing about this time of year is we've got the Open Championship in three weeks. So there's this week, then there's um, the Rocket Mortgage in Detroit and the John Deere in Illinois. So, you know, I'm just guessing. <laughs> I don't know if we're definite, but these guys are probably going to play this week and then take the trip overseas. So it's a bit of an interesting time in that we do have such a strong field this week, but for the next two weeks, these guys probably aren't going to be playing tournament golf. Yeah, I think I can't speak for Brooks Kepka, but this will be a great week for him with his brother. And then I think he'll be on his way over to the Open Championship, get acclimated over there. A lot of the guys go a week early and get the feel of what they're doing over there. So this is an important stretch for him because Kepka, look, Let's face it, Kepka does not like to be left out of the spotlight. What gets him in the spotlight more? Win this week, get into the top two in the FedEx Cup, got a shot at the 20 million. That's what motivates him. That would be amazing. Coming in at number four, Dustin Johnson, defending champion of this tournament. And well, again, had a bit of a chance. He was what, one under heading into Sunday at the US Open, ended up finishing 19th. So, you know, unforced errors again on Sunday. It seems to be a little bit of a theme for DJ right now, but we could never leave him out of our top five when he's defending this week. No, and, and we talked already about what kind of course does this suit? And Dustin Johnson showed me enough. He went through a real lull where he wasn't playing very good golf, worked on his putting at the Palmetto, finished in the top 10, had a triple late in the day, played pretty good last week, but he was so under the radar, nobody was even talking about DJ. But he won this tournament last year. I always like guys that are playing pretty good golf, know how to play this golf course. And Dustin Johnson, you know, slips now to number four but it, you know it, it feels like it feels to me like that's about where he should be so is he motivated yeah probably a little bit i think it's hard to get the feel for dustin because he's so unemotional about everything it's hard to get your pulse on where is he with his game but i think it's okay i think this course is fine for him it's a long hitter he's going to kill the par fives he hits a fade yes i i still like him diane in the top five absolutely yeah, and as you said, going back to a place where he's won, you talk about Dustin Johnson being unemotional. Our guy at number five definitely falls into the same bracket. He won a couple of weeks ago at Jack's Place, the Memorial Tournament, and then ended up finishing in a tie for 15th at the US Open. His stats are so good. Um, Patrick Cantley is just a, an all-round solid performer, so we have him in at number five. Yes, Patrick Cantlay is a solid performer, yes, indeed. And of course, he won a Jacks tournament. This is a little bit different a golf course, but when you start to rank a field and you start to look at who makes birdies, who putts good, who hits it straight, you can't go past Cantlay. He's so solid. So without, I know he's sort of a flat liner and that Jack Nicholas says he wishes he smiled more. And I'm kind of flatlining him here, but he deserves where he is in this field, Diane. He's just, Cantlay is just solid, solid. Yeah, that's the word. He's 134th in proximity to the hole, so that number is very high. But birdie average is 21st. Um, scrambling, he's second on the PGA Tour. So he can putt, we know he can putt, and he can get himself out of trouble as well. And he's definitely got the potential to make birdies and go low, which is what we know you're going to have to do this week. Yeah, 130th in proximity, but like, what, third on the money? So it's not really bothering him because he putts so well. So, you know, I like Cantley a lot, yeah. Okay, right, so our top five this week for the Travellers, Scotty Scheffler, Harris English, Brooks Kepka, Justin Johnson and Patrick Cantley. Coming up next, we'll go through the rest of our top five and give you our sizzlers this week for the Travellers Championship. Get in the game on the SG Tour Golf Gaming app and play four ball. It's a classic stroke play competition based on the aggregate scores of four players. Who makes your team? Well, pick four guys, one from each tier, based on the current World Golf Rankings. Want a tip? You need four guys to make the cut. Get in the game on the SG Tour Golf Gaming app, available on iOS in the App Store. 
Well, we're working our way through our re-ranked top 10 this week and giving you our top picks for the Travelers Championship at TPC River Highlands. Elk, where would this course rank in your favourites on the tour? The course or the hospitality? Or oh, the well, let's do the overall experience then. <laughs> you know, Cromwell in Hartford, Connecticut is in the middle of sort of blue collar factory town very unappealing looking piece of property up there not the golf course but around it but the tour loves it here because of the hospitality the tournament has for us and this golf course has its own unique style it's got a flat nine holes up on top that you can absolutely scorch and then it drops down in this valley you'll see my drawings this week i'm going to talk about this this two different nines but it's a fun place to go. The scoring is good. The food's great. You know, everyone in Hart big crowds. I mean, some of the biggest crowds we play in front of on the whole tour is in Hartford, Connecticut. It's awesome. Don't you have a favorite pizza restaurant round about here too? Yes. It's the North and South. No, it's the uh, Near and Far. Oh, yeah. the, near and, the Near and Far <laughs> restaurant, pub, pizza place. I knew that it had a funny name like that. That was like too yeah. Okay. No, is it first and last or is it near and far? I, I, <laughs> we'll, we'll look it up and we'll confirm before yeah. the end of the show so we can give out that top tip. Right, well, our re-ranked top five, Scotty Scheffler, Harris English, Brooks Kepka, Dustin Johnson and Patrick Cantley. So, I mean, big names in the field this week. And the guy coming in at number six is a guy who was definitely in the mix at the US Open. It's funny because he finished seventh, but he was one of these names that was a little bit overlooked. Paul Casey has got incredible stats and Elk, the thing that really sticks out in his last three events, seventh, sixth and fourth. Yes, and I watched Casey's round. He played on Saturday with Jordan Spieth. I think he shot four under at Torrey on Saturday and swinging as good as, as he always have. There was a, I think last week someone told me that the most money that was spent on one player other than Ram was Paul Casey. So a lot of people understand and they know how good this guy can hit it. Question mark's always been, how is he putting? How is Casey putting? And I see that he's gone across handed. I watched him make some putts uh, over the weekend. Yeah, I mean, Paul Casey has been a great player for a, a long time, but he's very quiet, as you've noted. But here's a course that he, he can explode on. He's hitting it good. He's a great striker of the ball. We, we know all that, but it's, it's always about the putting. Well, he's made that change, as you say, and that came out probably a good time. 116th in putting average on the tour, 53rd in birdie average. So when you know that a guy's made a change, you have to take those numbers with a bit of a pinch of salt because he's made a change to get better. And from what we saw at Tory Pines, it's working. Yeah, and you can't always look at where he is uh, on the putting because if you have a guy like Casey who hits the ball very well, I remember listening to uh, Colin Morikawa saying, look, I don't have to be in the top 10 in putting. If I get into the top 50, because I hit so many greens in reg, that'll put me into the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. Casey's a little bit the same way. Gets a lot of greens, gets a lot of looks, so he accumulates a lot of putts, and thus the 130th. But yes, it's always, it's not quite a question mark like say Bubba Watson's putting, because he's very hot and cold. Casey's a little bit better putter than that, but I like Casey this week too. Okay, so he's at number six. At number seven, well, this name, when you talk about a course that requires greens and reg, proximity to the hole, this is the name that's always going to jump out for us. And he's playing great. We have Abraham Answer in at number seven. You know, missed the cut at the US Open, but I think before that, four consecutive top 15 finishes. He's finished tied 11th at this tournament in 2020 and in 2019. And, well, hitting the greens and getting getting it close, it's the key to his game. Another guy that's going to win on this tour soon. Giant weeks at Wells Fargo, giant week at Players' Championship last round, giant week at the PGA Championship last round. Abraham Anser is a, one of the straightest hitters we have on the tour, and he hasn't won. He's in the same boat as Scotty Scheffler. But I know this kid and I know how good he can play and he must be thinking, Diane, well, here's a chance for me. I hit the ball straight as these guys. I've got to step up and I'm just sort of 
going with my gut a little bit here, Diane, on answer, I just think it's time for one of these guys to win a tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's still surprising sometimes to think that he hasn't won and the win has to be around the corner. This course sets up so well for him. I mean, he's a big hitter and 14th in scrambling on the tour. So even if he misses a green, which he doesn't do very often, he knows how to get himself right up there and, and make it count. So we have Abraham Answer at seven this week, 33 to one. The guy at number eight, well, he can definitely putt and we saw him get his debut victory at the Valspar Championship this year. Again, it was only a matter of time before this guy got that win and Sam Burns would be very happy to get it done in the 2021 season. Birdie average, he's first on the PGA Tour. Putting average, he's fourth. So we know that's going to be so big this week. And he can scorch earth when he gets going, Sam Burns. So. Number two is a drivable par four. He can literally smash this ball off the tee, Diane, make a lot of birdies. And that's the kind of player he is. He's sort of a he's sort of a Brooks Kepka, a bit of a brute when he gets on the golf course. He can he really has a sort of a one set mind, go for it. You know, uh, I really like this kid, Burns, and um, I just I just think this is a this is a match made in heaven for birdies right here for him. Okay, coming off a missed cut, there's been a little dip in his form, finishing 50th um, the week before that, well, two weeks before that at Memorial, but how, uh, how is that a concern heading into a week like this, that he doesn't have that momentum of form taking him through? Yeah, so we always talk a lot about on this show, you know, we, we talk about Brooks Kepka who missed the cut, and does that affect him going to a major? No. Mm -hmm. uh, now Sam Burns missed the cut last week, we could go back and tell you why he missed the cut, whether he missed the fairways and couldn't do anything out of the rough. Probably was it was the case. Um, but Burns, you know, Burns is better than a lot of these guys, Diane. They, they just are. And they able to separate themselves over four days on a golf course where you make a lot of birdies. Burns is a great putter and he makes a ton of birdies. That's the two ingredients you have to have to play this course. Okay. So he's at number eight. Coming in at number nine, a guy that I just always want to root for. And I'm always happy to see him do well, which right now is a lot. He finished runner up here last year and was in the mix at the US Open, finishing in a tie for 15th at the end. But Kevin Streelman is our number nine pick. Real good friend of ours, Caddies for him, kid named Mike Bester, uh, our producer and I, is one of our best friends. and. He gives us information on Strillman. Strillman, we saw him playing really well at the PGA. And why did, what does Strillman do when he plays well? Well, he, you know, he hits it straight, but he, he makes everything. And he hits it, iron shots good. And he's got a good caddy and he's organized. His swing is getting better each week. He's always tinkering, but not too much. And Strillman is a hot player. He's playing well right now. He was right there Saturday night coming into Sunday. And like a lot of guys were at, just couldn't do the job on Sunday that Ram did. But yeah, Strelman's playing great. Yeah, top 20 in his last three events as well. So Kevin Strelman, yeah, and after finishing runner up last year, this just that we talk about the horses for courses. This seems to be a, a track that Kevin Strelman likes. But the guy at number 10, I mean, nobody knows TBC River Highlands or has those winning memories like Bubba Watson. He won here in 2010, 2015, and in 2018. He has a huge involvement with this tournament with the charitable initiatives so we have him firmly at number 10 this week and Bubba you know is an interesting character he always plays good at the same places yeah. he plays really good at Riviera he popped up on our radar he plays really good at Torrey Pines he was right there and I listened to his interviews he's like man I'm just so nervous on these greens he said I'm nervous every hole every shot and all this and it kind of got to him in the end yesterday. And what, what did he finish in the US Open? 50th. So. Oh, he, he really blew it up yesterday. But I know he was right there. He was in the next to last group playing, I think, with Wolf the day before, was he? Uh, on Saturday, or was it with Ram? He was with Ram on Saturday at the US Open. And okay, he blew up yesterday, but he's coming to one of his favorite places. And how can you leave Bubba Watson? This guy's got the pink driver, he hits the big curve shots, and he knows how to do it on this golf course. He's won it three times. So I'm not leaving him out, Diane, because he's only 
a little nervy feeling, maybe get off the U.S. Open courses where the greens aren't as slopey, gets back to some familiar greens like these ones, and he'll be back to normal. We're not even going to go into his stats because they're just very high. Apart from one, total driving, he's 30th on the PGA Tour right now. And I mean, you can't really go wrong when you're 30th in total driving. It's a very good stat to have on your side. And he knows it inside out here. So all those vibes for Bubba Watson at number 10 this week. He's 50 to 1, which is still pretty good for someone who's won three times on this course. You just can't leave a guy out that plays good at the same places. I mean, I have a reputation, Diane, of I won multiple times at four different places. So everybody would look at me when I went to Doral or everyone would look at me when I went to, you know, TPC because of, I had a certain characteristic I'd do well, no matter what I was doing on tour that year. So Bubba Watson, I am not leaving off my board with three wins at this course. I love it. Right, so our full top 10 this week for the Travellers. Scotty Scheffler at number one, Harris English at two, who by the way is 45 to one. So very good with the form that he's displaying. Brooks Kepka at three, DJ at four, Patrick Cantley at number five. At six, it's Casey. At seven, Answer. Sam Burns at eight, Kevin Streelman, last year's runner up at nine, and Bubba Watson at 10. Coming up next, we're gonna go through our sizzlers. We've got three names of guys with higher odds who made big jumps up our re-ranking this week. A little bit of uh, US Open form is gonna play into this as well. And we'll give you those next on the Tour Report. Play Money Grabber on the SG Tour. Instead of strokes, it's all about the cash. You pick a team of four players, one from each tier, and scoring is based on the money that your team wins. Your guys missed the cut? No problem, you're still in the game. The SG Tour Golf Gaming App, available on iOS in the App Store. It's the Tour Report from Secret Golf this week for the Travellers Championship. We've gone through our top 10. We're going to give you our sizzlers in just a little while. But Elk first, Bryson DeChambeau in the field this week. At the end of Saturday, it really looked like he was going to be the one to beat. I mean, defending champion at the US Open. He had talked about the fact that he had, a, it's almost like he had an epiphany in his sleep in the middle of the night and he knew what he had to go work on. It worked for him, he was right in there. And then Sunday, back nine, he imploded. Ended up shooting 77 and ta finished, uh, where did he finish? 26th, oh my gosh, he ended up finishing 26th. <laughs> yeah, and there's a reason I think, I don't know how to fit him in this week because he shot 44 on the back nine of the US Open. He had a double, he bladed it out of the bunker, he shanked it on 17 and made a quad. And everything just came apart for him on the back nine. And, and I, I, I wondered out loud when I was watching it is, well, you shouldn't be able to hit it anywhere and win the US Open. You've got to be able to hit some fairways. And, and that's what actually did happen at the end. John Rahm did hit fairways and did take it by the throat. And everyone else was missing fairways, including Bryson. But what does he do this week if he takes that sort of wild finish yesterday? Where does he settle himself into a very short course? Yeah. Will Bryson throttle back this week? Probably not. Is he hitting it actually straight at all? No. He putted great. He's uh, admittedly was an A plus with his putting. Is his wedges any good? Eh, you know, 50 50. So. I've got him off the board this week, Diane. I think it's going to take a week or two for him to regroup himself and just get his thoughts together. And what is he trying to do strategy wise? What is he doing? Mm -hmm. It was also positive at the end of Saturday. And on you have your big game on the SG Tour app. And my boyfriend, Garrett, was sitting second at the end of Saturday. And he, he was buzzing about this. I mean, he was checking the app every five minutes. And he said, I mean, all I need to do, I need Bryson to play well on Sunday. And we were all like, well, that's inevitable. Come on. I think the guy above him had Casey. So and it was like, you know, if Casey falls away and Bryson plays great, then I'm probably going to win. And then <laughs> we were watching the back nine, like what on earth is happening here? That quad on 17, I mean, it was just... And I hadn't seen that. I think it was the only, I think he was the only person to have such a high score on 17 all week. 
Yeah, and he made the turn. He got through number 10 and 11. He hit a seven iron from 230 yards into the right, way out right, made a bogey there. And then the next hole on 12, he drove it into the real deep stuff. And I saw him make the most ferocious swing I've ever seen anyone in the history of golf. He got it on the green from about 160 yards. And I turned to Sam and I said, this guy could hit it out of barbed wire. I mean, it was incredible. And I just, I couldn't believe he three putted that and then the wheels came off. But, um, you know, I think I've seen him play this course last year, Diane, when you were up there right after COVID, he tried to drive the ninth green across the corner. I mean, I just don't know how to handicap a guy who's come off that spell he had yesterday afternoon and go to a really short course. And what is he going to do? Well, and the thing is, is if he does throttle it back, he has to change his complete strategy because with it being a shorter course, it's almost like that would be the sensible thing to do. But he likes to showboat a little bit and hit the driver where he can. So, and when I say where he can, anywhere on the course. (laughs) Maybe he'll do better when he gets over to the Open Championship and your side of the pond dying where there's not as many trees, but we'll see. But there's a lot of trees at this course. I just, I cannot put him on the board this week, Diane. Sorry, it's just too much contrast here. Okay, I hear ya. So we're on to our three sizzlers. These are guys with bigger odds who really made jumps up in our re-ranking. And our first guy came in at number 11 when we shook all the guys around. Cameron Tringali. His stats are really good. And when I say really good, I mean really good. He's having a great year, Tringali. All the way back to the RSM where he got beaten the playoff or finished out of the playoff by one stroke. But Tringali is one of these guys that you don't hear much of and then all of a sudden you see his name and he kind of has a tendency to stay there. But Tringali putts so good. I think he's on a... We talked at the top of the show about five weeks from now, this this year is over for a lot of guys. We're going to go into the playoffs and there's a lot of jockeying going on right now. There's some other guys we'll be talking about in a minute that are trying to keep their cards or trying to do something. Tringali... Putt so good, this is an ideal week for him to sit on the sizzle. Yeah, okay, and he is 80 to 1. Top stat would be a scrambling, he's 10th. Putting average, he's 16th. You've already said that that's the strength of his game. So Cameron Tringali is our first sizzler. Our second guy, this one, um, he's a name that again, I always feel like it's a Saturday. I feel like moving day is his strong day. Emiliano Grillo is first on the whole PGA Tour for proximity to the hole. And we know how big it's going to be this week. The guys are going to have to make birdies. Yep, another guy, he played good recently at Colonial, a very narrow course, small greens. This course will suit well for him. He's a great striker. Uh, Again, this is time of the year where guys are really jockeying. And I'm, I'm looking for motivated players that are in form. Grillo is that guy. So yes, he's almost a top tenner because of the way he can get going. So what's his odds this week, Grillo? 66 to 1. Yeah, it's a great bet. Yeah, really good. And then our third sizzler, well, we saw what he could do at the US Open because he was really, I mean, completely in contention until he had such a bad break and his ball got stuck in a tree. They showed it on the telecast a couple of times and they were like, you can see his ball fall out and or it bounced on the cart path and then went back into the tree. And I'm like, I couldn't see that. <laughs> but so many positives for Mackenzie Hughes who finished in a tie for third here last year. He's made the cut here every time he's played and coming off that form at the US Open at 100 to one seems to be a bit of a no brainer. I think Mackenzie Hughes will keep it going. He had that one break yesterday. Playing in the final group of the US Open was very stressful. Playing with Louis Oosthuizen, who, you know, at the end, he was right there. He saw that tournament unfold, and he'll be thinking today, okay, how do I get myself back to where I was Saturday night when I was leading this tournament? And we know that 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 good form is just right there. So, yes, I'm going to ride this horse, Diane. He's got good odds. He's got the whole nation behind him. Canada that is they're up there still locked down they're allowed to play golf but Mackenzie Hughes is a nice bright light for them to look at but yes he's playing very well you noted terrible shot he hit at number 11 pulled a long iron hit the cart path stuck in a tree just like what happened here Uh, but you know great learning experience for him on the last group of the US Open 
Incredible. We, uh, I always think about Brian Harmon because we talked about Harmon. Was it at Erin Hills? He played great in the US Open and the confidence that you take from performing well in a major against such a stacked top 10 at the time of players on that final round is insane. So Mackenzie Hughes, we're hoping that he keeps it going this week and at 100 to 1, there's definitely some value in there. Yep. And you know, as I said, Mackenzie Hughes, young guy, stood on the 18th green yesterday at Torrey Pines and saw Oosthausen trying to eagle the last hole. He finished up making a 15-footer for birdie. Then all of a sudden, Rahm had won it. And for history, forever in golf, he'll be he'll, he'll know intimately about that feeling. And that sticks with a player. And he knows what it took to get him there. Will he be able to carry it forward? I think so. I think, I think, he'll, play, I think he'll play well this week. And I think it's a very good bet. There was a cool thing that after Louis had bogeyed 17, um, Mackenzie Hughes said to him on the 18th tee, I, I wish that it was you hitting first on 18. And I was like, what a lovely moment. Um, we kind of all did, I guess. But So our three sizzlers for the travelers, Cameron Tringali, Emiliano Grillo, and Mackenzie Hughes. Right, Elk, thank you. Excited to watch this week um, with Dustin Johnson being defending champion and with the strength of fields and with a lot of guys coming off great form at the US Open. It's got all the makings for another dramatic week on the PGA Tour. Yes, it does. Saturday is considered moving day and you can play along on the SG Tour. It's a one day stroke play competition where you select a team of four players to shoot the lowest scores of the day. Will you make big moves? Download the SG Tour golf gaming app on iOS now. Well, here we go. It, uh, it could be your favorite part of the show. It's most definitely mine. Jay Kaplan joins us to talk about our dark horse picks this week, our high value guys that maybe you're sleeping on a little bit. And um, we'll see how they get on this week. I have to ask, what is the story behind your background today? It's a great story, and it leads into probably the ultimate underdog. And the reason Charlie Sifford is behind me is because of Juneteenth, I figured what a perfect way to honor African Americans in golf than acknowledging and remembering that in 1967, Mr. Sifford became the first African American to win on tour in Hartford beating the likes of Raymond Floyd, Gary Player, Doug Ford in Hartford at Weatherfield Golf Course. It was not at the TPC, obviously it wasn't built. But let's remember Charlie Sifford, a true trailblazer and a man that has opened many doors for the select golfers that have come behind him. Excellent, good, I like what you're doing. Well, we're going to dive into our picks for this week and I'll let you go first. I know that your first guy is 125 to 1. So right away, you're getting the seal of approval with the odds. But I'm desperate to hear why. So uh, this is a guy I've used before and I love this guy. Everybody loves this guy because he's a man of many words and many opinions. And he just lives the life he wants to live. What I really like about this guy is he's playing really, really good golf. Finished 10th in his last outing. Uh, he's got a 45th and the 39th behind him. We have him ranked 13th in form, but he's got some heat on him. He's really got to perform the remainder of the year to really lock up his status for the following year. He's been out for so long. We know he's a player. We know what his flaws are. He's a little bit of a hothead, but in his older age, he's kind of calmed down. He struggles a little bit with total driving, but again, with a short course this week, I'm not too worried about it. He's one of the great chippers of all time on the PGA Tour. So if he does get out of place, he's going to be able to recover, sink a few putts. He's going to be right there, Diane. It's the one and the only PP, Pat Perez. Yeah, we know that wedge play is going to be so important this week and putting is a shorter course so it doesn't take I mean Pat's a, a medium range hitter it's not going to take 
massive length to be able to get yourself in these positions to play accurate wedge shots into the greens. So this is a great pick, Jay, great pick. We've seen some really good form from him lately and 125 to one, there's definitely some value. You mentioned the FedEx Cup. He's 111th in the FedEx Cup standings right now. 125 is the number, the golden number that you want to be in at the start to guarantee your card for next year. And he's still a little bit shaky. I don't think you're safe yet being at 111. So he yeah. has to have he has to have a couple of good weeks. He does, and I, I just like the way he's trending. I think he's a guy who's been out here for so long. He's not going to be phased by by the pressure. I think he'll actually enjoy the challenge okay. of not just reversing his direction, being at 111, but actually jumping up. What would a win do for a guy like Pat Perez this week? It would mean a ton for a guy in his at his age and his career. I didn't call him old. I just said a bit of age. But this just feels like an event Pat Perez could walk away with on Sunday and people would be like, good for that dude. Okay, so your first pick is Pat Perez. You have one more, but I'm gonna jump in with mine. And it is, I'm just gonna give you his name right away because it was much to the delight of you guys on our pre-production call. <laughs> Hank Lebioda. Be and sure about that. I am going with Hank because we have seen some really positive signs from him this year. He played great at the Valspar at Innisbrook. And what made me think about that, Elk told me that this course is way easier than Innisbrook, but Paul Casey's played well there. Sam Burns has played well there. They've both won there. And we both have them, we have both of them in our top 10. So I was like, well, there could be a little correlation there. And Hank finished well at the Valspar this year. Also, he played well at the Byron Nelson just a few short weeks ago, and his numbers are pretty good. When you look at his proximity to the hole, he's ninth on the whole PGA Tour and fourth in scrambling. We know the proximity is gonna be such a key stat this week, and at 150 to one, I think there could be a little bit of value in Lebioda as a sleeper for the travelers. Hey, you got me. I just like the way you say his name. So I'm going to go ahead and agree with you that this is a phenomenal pick, but say his name one more time. I'm Lebioda. Awesome. Awesome. It sounds like he's on an animated series on Sunday nights. That's what his name sounds like. But I look forward to tracking him all week. And of course, fingers crossed for you. Okay. Right. Your third and final, our third final pick. I like how you said that. We're finally on a team. My you and I are just well. like. <laughs> so my final dark horse pick is about as dark horse as you can get. This is a kid that has qualified through PGA Tour University. What? That's right. PGA Tour U. Wow. PGA Tour U uh, is a great idea that was created by the tour. And I don't always pat them on the back, but on this one, I will. It's for college seniors who were turning pro early and now they're going to be able to stay. And if they're ranked in the top five, they immediately qualify for Corn Ferry okay. at the end of the season, right. which is a great idea. It allows them to kind of ease their way in to the Corn Ferry Tour. They'll have about nine, eight or nine events to be able to accumulate points to go ahead and get their Corn Ferry card or if they perform to get qualify for their PGA Tour card. So it's this great avenue for really good young players at the top of the college programs to come play professional golf. So Austin Eckwrote is my pick this week. I can't even say his name right. Now, why did I look at him? Because I'm like looking at his name at the bottom of the chart and there's not one statistic available for this dude except for his finishes. So I start looking at his finishes T13 on Corn Ferry last week, the week before uh, was a solo seventh. Okay. He did play at Valero this year and missed the cut. I'm not worried about it. So what's this dude's background? Oklahoma State, that's already a plus. Tight with Matthew Wolf. I already like that fact. Lives with Victor Hovland in his house when Victor's not there. So he's been, he's been around elite young players that we've seen that come out on tour, not just ready to compete, but ready to win. 
This is a guy who's ready to compete and might be ready to win. And what a better place to do it under the radar on a course that's very scorable against big names. Nobody's going to know who this kid is. My second dark horse pick, including me. I don't know who the hell he is, but I'm going to pick him anyway. Austin Eckroat. Welcome to the PGA Tour, my friend. And because, you know, looking at the odds, we've got guys that are up there at like 350 to 1. He is 160 to 1. So you're not alone in your reasoning here. Yeah, I like it. Sharks, uh, Diane, we always say the sharks know and the sharks are on to this kid early. Okay, well, we have got Pat Perez, Hank Levioda, and Austin Eckroat as our dark horse picks this week. I like it. Good. And again, Way to go, Charlie Sifford. Yeah, way, way to go. Thank you very much for watching our show. It's for the Travelers Championship. Next week, it's off to Detroit for the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Following week, it's the John Deere, and then it's the Open Championship. So we are steamrolling towards the fourth and final major of the year. But anyway, we will see you next week for everything you need to know about Detroit. Well, the Rocket Mortgage. <laughs> <laughs>